The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, dear participants. Thank you, everyone, for joining. A warm welcome to the webinar on making equal pay for you and women and I am the Women's Empowerment Principal Specialist. I will be moderating today. First, I would like to go through our agenda. The opening remarks will be given by Carla Kraft. Uh, she is the Advocacy and Communication Analyst of the Empower team. Diana uh, from MAMFORCE will present the general landscape of gender gap policies and practices with a focus to EU companies. Stella Stare will discuss INA's initiatives and efforts in monitoring gender pay gaps. And INA is an oil and gas company in Croatia. And Raquel will present the self diagnosis tool for organizations to assess the equal remuneration for work of equal value between male and female workers. And first of all, um, if you have a question during the webinar, uh, please enter it in the question pane. And this is for the organizer, but also for the panelists to answer. We are happy to interact with you during the webinar. For this webinar, because we will be uh, featuring and making a demonstration on the new tool um, developed by UN. Um, I'd like to begin by saying a few words about the VMPower program. VMPower convenes public. Can you hear me? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, Mara, we are here. We can hear you. I'm working okay. out. I, we just received some uh, notes that they cannot hear us. Okay. And uh, I'd like to begin by saying a few words uh, about the VMPower program. VMPower convenes public and private sector stakeholders to participate in consultations on women's economic empowerment in G7 countries and the European Union more broadly. And that also includes all of you as part of the global audience. VMPower's focus is to work with companies on the adoption and implementation of women's economic principles, women's empowerment principles. Equal pay for, equal, for work of equal value that we will discuss today is covered under WEPS 2, which is treat all women and men fairly at work, respect and support human rights and non-discrimination. And to are very excited to explore concrete strategies to achieve equal pay for work of equal value and to feature some good business practices on pay transparency and measuring and closing gender pay gaps. I would like to invite uh, Carla Kraft. She's advocacy and communication analyst in UN Women, and she has been working very hard on the production of the gender pay gap guidance note for companies. So she will provide a general uh, view uh, over the topic. Over to you, Carla. Hi, thanks for all. Um, lovely to be on the line with um, all of our attendees. Um, just want to give a quick quick overview on the topic, um, which I think if um, you know you've been paying attention, you will know you will know that you know women globally are paid on average 22% less than men. Some company level data is showing that a mean gender pay gap is about 20%. Now these numbers vary widely around the world and um, across countries and women are not a homo homogenous group um, but while the gender pay gap has been slowly narrowing over the past decades what we show now is that at current rates it will take more than 70 years to close completely 
This now requires a lot of action from multi-stakeholders, from companies and governments and civil society alike. We know that gender pay gaps are symptomatic of gender inequalities that reflect discrimination, implicit biases, and social norms in society that become further replicated at the company level. As we will hear later today, companies are increasingly taking action to remove discrimination in the workplace and to redress or to close gender pay gaps. While some act actions are emanating and coming from stronger government regulations that are requiring companies to track and report wages of their companies, um, more and more companies are actually voluntarily taking actions because they recognize that closing gender pay gaps really is a win-win business strategy um, that helps attract talent, reduce turnover, increase in, uh, retention, it boosts morale and productivity, and it contributes more broadly to a company's growth and sustainability that then has knock-on effects, of course, with economic growth. And we really have now the data to show that it is good and benefits everyone. But despite this growing corporate support to close gender pay gaps, there's still a better need, a need for, for real understanding of the application of the principle of equal pay for work of equal value. This means that women and men receive the same pay when they do identical or similar jobs, but also when their roles are different, and but they have similar working conditions or demand the same level of skill, training, effort, or responsibility. This principle dates back all the way to 1951 during the passage of the International Labor Organization Convention 100 on Equal Remuneration. So as the global community, we, we've been advocating and pushing for closing gender pay gaps for over 68 years. So it really is time that we start applying this principle as it's critical to, to eliminating gender-based discrimination and achieving gender equality, both in the world of work and beyond. To further support companies, as Merle had mentioned, the We Empower program is developing a women's empowerment principles implementation toolkit that will be full of guidance notes on thematic areas, good practices, and case studies. As she mentioned, the first one is on equal pay, and we will be rolling this out over the coming months. This guidance note will provide an introduction and overview to the tool that our colleague Raquel will be diving into later. Thank you so much for your um, time. Thank you very much, Carla. Thank you for this overview, and we are looking forward uh, to receiving the guidance note and disseminate it. And uh, our first presenter is Diana Kobach Deskovic. And Diana is the CEO of strategy firm Spana Code and uh, serves as the president at Working Mother Institute. She is the author of a unique methodology, MAM Force, which evaluates work life balance and gender equality in the workplace, then supporting transformation towards more inclusive and diverse organizations which are utilizing women talents. Over to you, Diana. Diana, feel free to unmute and, and begin the presentation. Okay, uh, so uh, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, Meral, thank you for the introduction. Uh, and uh, uh, I would like to guide you shortly through the European, uh, European practices in a gender pay gap. Uh, which we measure through uh, one of the tools we, uh, we use. I personally developed uh, uh, this tool. Uh, and I will shortly guide you through the, this work in uh, Croatia and other European countries and to give you a little bit of the perspective about the um, legal, uh, not only legal requir requirements and, and the possibilities and what we have about the law uh, in, the, in the European Union among the, among the companies. Uh, so as you can see on the this uh, uh, as you can see on this uh, slide, uh, the MAM Force uh, method is a, a diversity, equity, and inclusion audit, which tracks a, a host of indicators that make organizational change measurable and sustainable in the long run. 
the aim of the whole evaluation process is to evaluate policies and procedures which are incremental uh, for incl inclusive corporate culture uh, based on open communication, trust and diversity, and which in parallel, of course, enable a work-life balance and, uh, and the gender, equ uh, gender equality. Uh, so, um, um, in the European Union, um, European Union, Union has uh, recognized that uh, important link between, uh, between work-life balance and gender equality because when, whenever we talk about the work-life balance, actually we are talking mostly about women and, uh, and unfortunately not yet men, but there is a, a new generation of uh, young men who are um, uh, coming to the, to, the work, uh, uh, to the workplaces and they are changing that uh, culture. So what we do, we evaluate policies and procedures and uh, analyze workforce uh, and, or, or, and uh, on parallel ask employees about their perception or better said their own work experience in the organization to give a, a objective picture to the uh, employers. Uh, and the emphasis is put on organization and behavioral design, which is necessary to achieve gender parity in recruitment, development opportunities, uh, management, uh, and pay. And within the domain which encompass responsible governments, as you can see here on the slide, uh, we evaluate uh, gender uh, pay gap, including pay policy and uh, accompanying evaluation of uh, annual sa uh, salaries and, uh, and awards. Uh, I would, can you please move to the next slide? So, in uh, um, highly developed organizations, um, existing management control systems are mostly based on merit, um, which means they're offering the same opportunities for everyone, and which is, as we, uh, we who are deeply in, the, in, in this field uh, know, uh, uh, is uh, uh, based on the organizational and uh, behavioral research evidence, is uh, still very biased, even though it is uh, uh, it is uh, merit-based. Um, the same measure doesn't uh, work for everyone and to attract and keep the best uh, talents, companies have to look for uh, adjustable, uh, adjustable solutions and that, that what, that's what we are uh, helping them to find for uh, uh, their particular uh, industry. Next slide, please. Uh, in, uh, our, in our analysis, we look at um, uh, the complete cycle uh, from recruitment to succession planning with insights into data and indicators which uh, signal existence of biases in the process. The pay gap is analyzed within the performance management where uh, we evaluate the policy which is of equal importance and the procedures in place, uh, its execution and the indicators in the gender, uh, uh, gender pay uh, gap. Uh, next slide. And for the uh, for the pay gap analysis, it is important to monitor it and uh, uh, evaluate. And uh, what we do, we analyze average annual salary for men and women, and calculate average value of women's salaries as a percentage of men's salaries. Uh, evaluation, as uh, um, as you can see on the on the graph, uh, is conducted across all levels by gender. Uh, and uh, um, in this example, we didn't find difference among women and men on uh, top management level, and uh, neither within uh, the middle management. But there is a difference on the at the line management level, which is favorable uh, to men for 38%. Uh, while women are better paid um, at employee level for four uh, percent. So, in addition to this uh, annual salary analysis, what we do is we analyze the re reward system uh, or financial and uh, other kind of uh, stimulations, uh, which is in uh, most cases. Um, so, yeah, maybe next slide, please. So, this reward system. What we analyze, we analyze, as you can see, this, um, for example, financial, stim uh, uh, financial um, uh, stimulation, um, which is um, usually lower in volume uh, and, uh, and also mostly proportionally higher for women uh, in organizations, while uh, annual financial bonuses 
uh, are um, higher for uh, um, for a man. They're more in a, in a man's hands in organizations. Uh, so the same uh, the same benefits works better for the uh, for the life and retirement insurance for the uh, company cars, which are still uh, important benefit in uh, some of the some of the countries, while in some countries it is not of any relevance anymore. And uh, while the health insurance, additional health insurance and financial aid for family needs, there are usually no uh, differences among, among, uh, uh, among gender. Uh, so the, the next slide, please. Uh, so for the for now we, we have the we have more challenges with reward system which is directly aligned to performance uh, management uh, uh, than with the regular uh, pay which is mostly based on pay grades uh, which are well defined in job classification uh, classifications uh, systems taking into consideration qualifications uh, responsibility responsibility level uh, experience and uh, and the working conditions and of course the the best practice is when uh, there is no gap or at least with minimal minimal pay gap below market uh, average which we will see later on the uh, uh, in presentation so next slide please uh, to in our case to motivate companies to move forward uh, based on the development level on their uh, human resources and the diversity equity and inclusion practices uh, we afford them one of three possible levels of certificate uh, and uh, at the end of the of the, each uh, the process we set new targets uh, for the the next period uh, and then we repeat it uh, repeat it on a annual biannual or every three years depends on the level of development of the of the company uh, and uh, what is very important is important that the method as such does not allow the lead status uh, for comp uh, for a company company unless uh, the company does not have indicators uh, for the appropriate indicators for the key elements in uh, uh, communication uh, engagement pay gap work-life balance and uh, uh, proportion of women uh, in uh, in management. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, speaking about the best practices uh, in a uh, European Union, uh, yeah, I, I I think that we actually did a lot. Uh, um, the problem has been recognized, uh, and now we have actually to push for the implementation of the the new directives. So the first. Uh, when we are when we are talking about practice, best practices, they are of course about legal requirement requirements, but still legal requirements are very important. So, for example, in Croatia, uh, we have a legal uh, requirement for the public uh, companies, uh, uh, which is which are legal requirements for the equal pay for equality as such and equal pay. Um, which is um, defined in the gender equality laws and acts. Uh, which enforce this uh, equal pay grades in the uh, public sector. And there are no differences in a, in a base, but still there are more men, uh, men at the top, uh, which is, is, and it's not uh, linked to, uh, uh, to pay gap. Uh, in a, in the a UK, since 2018, there is a new mandatory uh, legislative about mandatory reporting for the public companies and uh, private big employers with over 250 uh, 50 employees uh, and uh, reporting for the uh, the first reporting saw, uh, showed the uh, substantial uh, pay gap uh, uh, pay gap uh, gender pay gap and uh, um, additional tool which is uh, helpful is uh, EU non financial reporting directive which contributes to uh, to pay gap uh, pay gap uh, awareness uh, and uh, it is a the non-financial reporting is mandatory for large public uh, interest companies with more than uh, 500 uh, employees and there are as i remember like 6000 uh, such companies uh, in the whole uh, european union uh, but uh, but then it is a matter of awareness and other uh, other employers also 
I would like to set a certain standard and follow the, the big employers. And within this uh, uh, non-financial reporting, the gender score data are not mandatory, but companies are motivated to report uh, progress if they have any. And what we do with our practices, we actually we, we, uh, we help them to, uh, to become aware uh, to become aware of that uh, possibility. Uh, and uh, it is, of course, it is an additional incentive for responsible employers to uh, to report uh, to report the gender uh, gender progress. And uh, what is uh, also very uh, what is what we see from our experience that the transparent pay grade system based on the job job classifications is uh, of incremental uh, importance for this annual uh, uh, pay gap. Um, an, uh, pay analysis, uh, which uh, which has clear roles and responsibilities, cl clear criteria for advancement and uh, equal uh, pay for work of equal uh, value, and um, uh, what we always suggest it is uh, that uh, the pay uh, pay value should be tr uh, transparent and uh, open and not covered with the uh, uh, covered with the myths. Uh, and uh, um, what is uh, of, again of incremental importance it is the guided and monitored performance management uh, process, which uh, uh, can recognize uh, unconscious biases and the gender uh, gender re uh, related biases, which is a uh, which is a still not an easy task to uh, to do. Next slide, please. And to to close this can I, next slide please uh, so looking at the looking at the european union we can see that the average uh, gender pay gap in european union is 16.2% uh, these are not the most recent data because we are always a bit late with the recent data um, but uh, these uh, figures are well below the uh, are still below the global average and then the most of the European Union countries, we have the very low uh, the pay gap, uh, pay gap, uh, uh, pay gaps. For example, in our, in my country, it is 8.7%, uh, uh, and um, the differences across countries are, uh, are huge. With uh, um, it, here is Romania lowest with 5.2, but according to some other data, is Slovenia is lowest with with 3.3.2. Uh, uh, so it uh, really changes on a, on a yearly basis. And what is the additional push for the uh, also for the pay gap? Uh, it is a new directive on a work-life balance, uh, which has been uh, uh, voted and enforced uh, in 2019 uh, in June this year. Um, it uh, indirectly tackles also the gender pay gap uh, because of the support uh, to fathers. Um, to uh, with the mandatory uh, mandatory leave, uh, parental leave for fathers, in addition to shared uh, parent uh, parent leave. So it is a, a measure which uh, uh, which tackles uh, stereotypes uh, about uh, women and the men roles, and indirectly it should also uh, have its influence on the on the pay gap. So that's all for me uh, for today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Diana. And the great to hear uh, that the companies are willing to go beyond the legislation and, um, and uh, so the report, and that begins with a transparent media system. Before moving on, uh, our next presenter, uh, we would like to see things online. So we are launching a very brief poll, and we would be happy uh, if you could answer it. And if everyone could mute themselves, please. Just giving a few minutes, yeah. Just giving a little bit more time. It's very interesting. We're seeing, we're, we're seeing so far that 
Um, the majority are outside of the EU and, and, and G7 countries, um, but but then there's a, a larger majority from from the US, um, and then some that are. Um, if we could have everyone mute. Thank you. Um, great. This is quite quite interesting and helpful as we move forward to um, some, uh, make sure that we're having relevant topics for the audience. So our second speaker is Stella. Stella Stare is the director of reward and HR operations at INA, which is an oil and gas company in Russia. And Stella is responsible for INA Group reward strategy, international mobility, HR controlling, and HR operations. Over to you, Stella. Uh, hi, everyone. I hope that everyone can hear me. Uh, I would like to thank you for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to present our company and our practice uh, regarding the diversity in general and regarding the total reward strategy. Uh, both are actually ensuring us somehow to avoid the gender pay gap uh, in INAM, so we are quite proud uh, how things are working. Uh, can you please move to the next slide? Uh, so, I'm quite sure that many of you are actually not aware uh, what INA does and who we are. So, just to give you a short uh, company introduction to, for all of you to have the sense uh, of the background and the sizes. Uh, we are a Croatian oil and gas company uh, currently employing uh, 10,800 employees on group level. And we are running our business operations in uh, 10 countries. Our activities are mainly focused in Croatia and um, uh, CE, so Central Eastern Europe, uh, but we also operate in uh, countries of MENA region. Uh, we are vertically integrated oil and gas company, meaning that we have um, all segments connected with oil and gas from upstream or exploration and production through refining uh, or um, downstream uh, segment and retail or the sales of the um, oil, oil and gas. Uh, we are definitely one of the biggest companies in Croatia on group level and one of the major employers. Um, and the number of different uh, awards and certificates actually confirm this. Um, if you can move to the next slide, please. Uh, so, um, Oh, what we do is um, actually following some best practices uh, from the market and international companies and major global trends. Uh, in the last couple of years, INA is really devoted and paying special attention to um, overall uh, diversity and inclusion practice. Uh, I'm quite sure that in this audience you are all familiar with that and that I don't have to waste a lot of time on uh, explaining, but the studies are technically showing that the companies which are diverse have better productivity, uh, higher engagement, um, ultimately are more profitable. Uh, so we are also devoted to make the diversity and inclusion a part of our organizational culture. In line with that, uh, we are organizing on annual level the DNI devoted uh, company days called hashtag we are all okay or Swissmo OK in Croatian. And we uh, work with Diana and with Manforce to ensure that our DNA practices are uh, fully implemented in the company and that we are continuously up to date with the major global trends and that we adjust our policies and practices to it. Um, as a part of these actions, uh, what we did is we um, actually created or designed diversity and inclusion strategy and embedded it in our overall company 2030 business strategy. Uh, we have started with three pillars where we wanted to focus our attention, gender, age and nationality. And last year we added the fourth pillar of this uh, DNI strategy and that, uh, that is disability. Um, Naturally, I would say, as uh, we are a male dominant industry and business, uh, our first focus at the beginning of uh, DNI strategy in INA 
uh, was actually gender related. Um, so uh, our actions were um, pointed to uh, ensure or better say maybe work more on, on gender diversity. Uh, we have created a gender uh, scorecard, DNI, gender DNI scorecard, which is a regular report prepared uh, biannually currently on group level, where we have identified a list of key performance indicators or KPIs, which we are tracking and trying to influence with some focused actions uh, to actually improve um, these KPIs. Uh, some of them you can see on the corrections to uh, ensure that we maximize the number of female new hires whenever this is possible. We are monitoring uh, employee engagement on gender level, uh, both in terms of uh, responsiveness and in terms of engagement score. Uh, we definitely pay attention in performance management, uh, performance cycles, evaluation cycles, uh, that we have no um, gender-related bias um, when uh, evaluating individual performance, but also when um, uh, the managers are assessing talents, potential or uh, succession uh, within the company. And finally, we track um, um, we are trying to ensure uh, and analyze whether we have a gender pay gap uh, through monitoring the base salaries and uh, the total package that our male and female colleagues um, have. Uh, based on the last um, analysis, which was recently done as a part of Manforce recertification process, uh, we actually concluded that there is no gender pay gap uh, present uh, technically. Uh, you can move to the next slide, please. Um, our conclusion is that um, basically behind this success, I would say, in respect to gender pay gap, um, we actually have a really strong total reward strategy that is implemented in INA. Um, namely, all positions within INA group um, are evaluated, and for this evaluation, we are using Hay Group uh, job methodology. Uh, this means that each position in INA has the assigned value uh, based on the level of knowledge which is needed to complete or perform this job, based on the problem-solving um, skills that uh, the employee needs to have for, the, for this position, and ultimately, uh, depending on responsibility and, and accountability for the overall results that this position is holding. Um, as a part of the total reward strategy, uh, for each position uh, we have a reward package or total reward package which is linked to, uh, to the position and which corresponds to the uh, position grade uh, set in line with the uh, evaluation. This total reward is uh, comprised of uh, annual base salary. Uh, you can see it in the left a left, left picture on the slide. Uh, so it's comprised of the annual base salary, uh, the bonus elements or the short-term incentives uh, linked link to performance, uh, uh, benefits such as health insurance, uh, medical insurance, uh, company cars, holiday allowances and similar, and non-cash benefits such as flexible working arrangements, uh, different recognition systems, uh, career development and capability development options, and so on. Um, the element which is in this total reward package, uh, more or less subjective, uh, what we identified as a subjective, is actually the base salary, uh, where uh, managers have some discretionary right to set the salary uh, on a certain level. Uh, what we do to ensure that these levels are uh, within a certain range is we participate in annual salary surveys uh, for INA group operating markets, and this is done uh, together with Mercer as a provider. Uh, each year, based on the analysis of the market results, we are actually determining the pay scale uh, for each grade or the range of the salaries for each grade um, which is uh, set in the company. 
Um, our targeted value uh, base is 50th percentile or the market median of the Croatian general market. And we are targeting the median in terms of annual base salary and annual total cash. And uh, for each grade, we have a range uh, between 80 and 120 percent of market median. Uh, where the salary can be set depending on the experience, the tenure, and the individual performance of the employee, or some specific knowledge and skills um, that the um, the employee has. Um, technically, uh, so our biggest focus was actually to ensure that within the pay range uh, and within the certain grade, uh, we have the transparency and fairness in setting of these base salaries. Uh, and that there is no gender-related bias um, uh, in that respect. Uh, once these salaries are analyzed and checked, uh, it was visible that um, there is no difference uh, based on male and female uh, and calculated on averages um, the, the differences between the, the average salaries per grade uh, for male and female colleagues are really neglectable and um, maybe a, a percentage or, or two. Um, other elements of the compensation package and of the total reward package that we are offering to the employees, such as bonus uh, opportunity or the benefits uh, or the non, both material and, and non-material benefits are actually fixed and they are not linked to the gender, so they are at disposal for male and female colleagues equally and without any exceptions in, in that respect. Um, so technically, this total reward strategy is helping us uh, thoroughly to, to actually keep this um, fairness and transparency in the, in the pay system uh, generally, and to have the uh, motivated and, I would say, engaged system implemented in, in the company. Uh, our intention is definitely to continue monitoring uh, whether this is uh, stable or if there are any changes uh, in terms of the gender pay gap uh, and to continue focusing our actions to the diversity and inclusion strategy in general and uh, further improvements together with uh, Manforce and Diana. Um, with this I would finish my part of the PPT so uh, I hope it was useful and I'm at disposal for any questions you might have. Thank you. So how to measure equal pay for work of equal value and how to value jobs to eliminate discrimination. So Raquel uh, worked for 18 years as an advisor, researcher and trainer in the area of women's economic empowerment and gender responsive economic policies and budget in more than 20 countries. As UN Women's Economic Empowerment Regional Specialist, she has been promoting for the past two years the Equal Pay Agenda uh, in the Latin America and Caribbean region leading to the development of the diagnosis of equal remuneration tool and we call it DIR tool which she will be presenting today. Over to you Raquel. Okay Meryl, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the We Empower team for organizing this, this webinar. Uh, yeah, I'm pleased here to, to share uh, a, 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 an initial presentation of, of the tool that we have develop a, in conjunction with as, as UN Women as part of our win-win program, which is also an effort of supported by the European Union and the ILO. So before moving into the into the tool presentation, I would like to to get a little bit of the basis on what's behind the presentation. Next slide, please. As you know, uh, the uh, the ILO Convention uh, 100, which uh, Carla mentioned in its introductory pay, uh, uh, um, uh, time, uh, it states two principles. I mean, it's equal pay for work of equal value, which means uh, both 
that you can have uh, equal pay for similar or equal work. Uh, and, and also, you need to have equal pay for work that have similar value. Uh, when we look at the gender pay gap, we clearly see uh, uh, normally differences for the first component. So many of the differences actually currently measured by many of the companies are based on measuring if the company is, is finally rewarding equally for works of equal value. But normally, uh, the, the possibility to see if we are uh, rewarding equally jobs that are different but that have similar value is much more uh, uh, complicated to see. So the idea to come up with this tool is to be able to address these two companies. Um, the, the, it is also important to, to mention this because uh, currently what we see in the, at, the, at the country level on the gender pay gap analysis uh, is that there is a component that has to do with the segregation of the labor force. This is if women are in low paid uh, jobs than men, there will always be a gender pay gap at the country level. Also, what we tend to see regarding the second component of the gender pay gap is that uh, jobs that tend to be feminized tend to be also less and less rewarded. So, for example, some professions that used to be more uh, much um, male dominated as uh, the judicial power, there, is, there are studies in some countries that as women get into those positions, they position themselves also get low, lower and lower pay. So it's important in order to address uh, and to, to look for equal pay to be able to address these two components uh, to, uh, in different in, as a, in a different mechanism. So next slide please. Uh, Carla and my colleagues uh, already went through the benefits of addressing equal pay for equal value principle within companies just very roughly. It's very important to uh, remunerate staff according to the value they provide. So the moment we, we are able to provide an objective value of the position, we can uh, be more efficient in allocating the resources for, for these positions. Uh, it, it, it brings also satisfaction and commitment for employees and, and improves motivation. It also supports the attraction and retention of talent, and especially among female employees. It has been proved that uh, working on equal pay it also improves labor relations and contribute to a more effective and collective bargain. Uh, as we have seen, it, uh, equal pay is um, part of the many of the standards uh, that uh, certify companies uh, that promote gender equality. So it increases the social reputation of the organization and it also offers more efficient distribution of the salary burden among different work. So the, the jobs that bring more added value also get more, more resources. And the idea of having a structured way of measuring gender pay gap is also to, although at the beginning might require, require a little bit of investment from, 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 from human resources, at the end it will save time for, for those managing the, the payment system because it will allow uh, is standardizing and, and setting up a, a information system that can support management and decision making. Next slide, please. Uh, for us as UN Women, you know, we promote the women empowerment principles as the guiding route for companies to address and to promote gender equality. Uh, measuring equal pay and, and working to reduce gender pay gap uh, is directly uh, related to our second principle, which is treat all women and men fairly at work, respect and support human rights and non-discrimination. So when we work through uh, on this tool, we were also uh, responding to demands on, on specific companies, uh, signatures of webs that had requested a more simplified and advanced uh, tool to be able to address people pay. So now, in the next slide, I will directly go to the to the description of the tool. Uh, and because we have a limited time, I decided to concentrate my presentation basically on the kind of results that the tool is going to provide. Uh, although I will say that at the very end, how you can access the tool, it's important that for you to know that the tool comes with a manual 
and that is it's it's thought to be self-applied. So I will not be able to go into detail on how do you get this data from the tool, but uh, just to to let you know that together with the with the tool, you have a manual that will explain detail by detail how do you get it. I mean, how you use the the tool and how you get these results. So the tool, the diagnosis of equal remuneration tool, we call it the DIR because it comes from the Spanish, the Diagnostico Igualdad Remuneración. It's a self-diagnosis tool for organizations that allow to assess whether the principle of equal remuneration for work of equal value to male and female workers is being respected in line with ILO Convention on Equal Remuneration. It's a tool that's been developed by UN Women with a technical assistant of the consultancy and Greg. And as I mentioned at the beginning, it's been supported through the Win Win program, which is a program that is run in Latin America uh, in six countries, coordinated by Brazil, and supported and um, implemented uh, with, in coordination with ILO and supported and funded by the uh, European Union. The tool, next slide, please. Uh, what, what you need as a company to use the tool? Basically, the tool can be used by any organization, could be private or public, could be also an, 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 a foundation, which has a workforce that is worth it to, to measure equal value. So more or less about more than, we recommend to use it to more than 20, 25 uh, uh, people on board. Uh, uh, what you need to have is basically updated information of each employee with a rep for a reference period, including some personal information, not a lot, uh, because we try to make it as much uh, simpler as, as possible. Job descriptions, what is the position they held, in which department they are, and the salary. And salary understand, understood uh, the various components of salary as at my previous presentations already described what's content in the in the salary and in the remuneration packages. I won't go into detail, but the tool basically takes three companies, the fixed uh, salary, the, the variable uh, uh, salary, which is uh, complementary, and, and, and additional complements. Uh, the tool is in an Excel format and it's compatible with Microsoft Excel 2010 and later versions. So basically any company that has a, a, an Excel installed in their computers, they could do it. And it's currently free of charge for companies and organizations. I will give you the link at the end of the presentation in which you could find the tool. Uh, moving to the next slide, please. Uh, as I explained before, what we were, uh, what we thought the tool could bring as an added value compared to what it existed already in the market to, to measure equal pay is the possibility not just to compare men and women's salaries for the same job, uh, but also to determine objectively the value of these different positions and then come to a comparison where values I mean, where jobs of equal value could be compared regarding to their salaries. Next slide, please. Okay, so going to the first component. Next slide, please, yes. Uh, as I said, I'm not going to show you what are the data that you have to enter, but it's basically data on the payroll list and some basic descriptions of the, on, the, on the employees. Uh, one of the interesting things that I want to also share is that as you introduce the, the descriptive data of employees, it's also a, could be tailored to the company wants to include as a descriptive variable, whether the, the uh, employees have children or not, whether they've been uh, on maternity, paternity leave or not, whether they belong to ethnic, an ethnic group or not. These are also variables that in the analysis could be uh, taken into account to also measure, I mean, to also uh, see if the gender pay gap applies to a certain group of, of employees, no? Employees that have been on maternity leave or maternity leave, et cetera. But uh, so that's part of the, the, the kind of data to, that you can enter optionally. And then there are other uh, basic data as the name and the position and the, and the salary information that you will enter. 
With this basic information, the first uh, 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 group of results that you will get is this comparison of salaries for uh, women and men doing the same jobs. So you will see it, uh, for example, in this company, we, take, we took it as an example, you will see that there are certain positions in when women and men uh, uh, do not, uh, I mean, uh, 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 earn differently. Uh, the global pay gap is, uh, which is on the on the left, it's, uh, it exists, and it exists, please, next slide. It exists basically because there are some, I mean, basically in this company, uh, positions that are better paid are mainly male dominated. So there is a global gender pay gap for the company that is basically related to the to the disaggregate uh, segregation on, on on the different positions. But there are also uh, pay gap on certain positions, uh, such as for example, trade operator or commercial for for the Spanish, but the presentation were with the graphs and I couldn't change that part. Uh, so this uh, in in when we go to the to the analysis of these differences, that's where the components of the salary enter. Normally, basic uh, component of the salary is the same, but as 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 you get into the the um, variable components of the salary, is where we start to get differences. So, for example, the possibility of doing much more extra hours in case of males, etc. Next slide, please. Um, I will now touch into the second part of the of the tool, which is the possibility of first going to determine objective value of the jobs, and then to determine whether it's uh, there is a difference on 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 the pay gap in terms of of pay for work. Uh, sorry, equal pay for work of equal value. The first part then, and the part that takes a little bit more of time at, uh, when first applying the tool, but then it rests for the, for the it's, it saves time for the rest of the monitoring, is to determine objectively the value of jobs. For the tool, we have taken the four standard criteria, which are in the ILO conventions and in the manuals and guidance provided by the ILO, and there are also the four standard criteria used by many companies for job classifications. Each of these components of, uh, could be um, distributed by each company on, on the percentage of relevance. So one company could, for example, give 40% to responsibility or 50% to responsibility. Uh, this this, this uh, percentage could be defined by and tailored by each company. At the same time, each factor of relevance can be divided into factor of relevance, and it's the same. Each company could decide whether certain sub-factors uh, sub are more relevant or not relevant at all. So this is something that the, the tool allows company to make it tailored to uh, each company needs. Next slide, please. Uh, normally, I mean, I, I put here two examples. Uh, this is an example of two uh, positions that although they vary in their names and in their descriptions, they are similar in value. So uh, uh, for the operator, you have uh, less points for effort, more points on working conditions, less points on responsibility, and more points on qualification, which in an overall uh, point, uh, you make it as, as much as value as, for example, a teleoperator. Next slide, please. Uh, so normally, uh, the, the last part of the tool, what it gives us, it's a, it's a curve and it's a comparison between uh, the value of the positions, uh, which is on the horizontal axis, versus the amount of, of remuneration, average amount of remuneration that this position receives. So normally, in an ideal world of equal pay for equal value, this curve should be ascendant, and there should be no drop downs, right? So this it will indicate that works for more value receive, in average, more resources. If we make a zoom, next slide, please. When we make a zoom to this case uh, that we analyzed through the tool, 
you could see that, for example, in, the, in this example, the commercial position, which is much more male dominated, five men versus three women, uh, men here are, more, are better rewarded than women. Uh, you know, the triangle is upper here than the, the square, orange square, but they are also, in average, better remunerated than the technicians, which is on the uh, right side of the screen, which is a much more female, the M is for, for mujer, so it's a female uh, job. So this is an example of how uh, there is a value, a, a position that is much more female oriented or dominated is less, although it has more points in a uh, scale of value, uh, it, it is less remunerated than, uh, than the other position that is much more uh, uh, male dominated. So this is the kind of analysis that the tool will also be able to provide. And as I said, we could make this kind of analysis, of course, uh, giving uh, specific groups according to the different variables of description that we include in the, in the first part. Very much uh, fast because we are just finalizing. As I said, some of the advantages of using the tools compared to what exists already in the market. First, it's, uh, it's a tool that compare, allows to compare salaries of men and women for the same jobs but also goes deeper into doing this analysis for work of equal value, although for different positions. It's, we make it simpler compared to what ex, uh, tools that exist on the market. It is also a self-assessment tool. We don't want companies to upload any data on anywhere, but the tool is uh, downloadable and can be applied uh, by any company without needing to share the data. And finally, it is currently free of charge. Uh, uh, last and uh, final uh, slide, just to let you know how you could access the tool. The tool is accessible to be downloaded at, at this link that I'm providing here. It's currently available in, although the introductory page is still in Spanish, we're moving to translate it into English and Portuguese also. But the tool is already available in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. And you will just need to complete um, uh, some data for a, a statistical purposes that we won't share, but just to keep track of how many companies are downloading the, the, the tool. And you will get then an instructions manual, which is a PDF uh, document, an Excel file, which is actually the, do, the key tool that, uh, to work on it and also an example model to test uh, that, that allows you to see how the deal works uh, with provided data uh, as an example. So this is pretty much it. I thank you very much for your attention and your presentation and looking forward if there is time for questions. I know we are very much on time, but um, looking forward to hear from you if there's time. Thank you so much, Raquel. And if and if the community will allow us, just um, questions, things better for you. So just a quick um, um, curiosity on on how you're feeling that you. How did you feel about the information that was provided today? And again, this is very helpful for us so that we can um, continue providing relevant content that um, that that you're interested in coming back for. Um, sorry about that. And then um, we'll just give you a few more seconds. Thanks for bearing with us. Um, we're really pleased that the majority, um, the majority here is um, quite satisfied and that is um, really, really happy to us. So we're going to go ahead and close that since we have a few, um, just a few more questions for you. Um, so um, just sharing that information for you here and then we will just quickly go to um, 
um, after this webinar. So the first question was, how satisfied are you? And now we're wondering, um, did you learn anything? How informed um, do you feel now with some of the po company policies that were provided and the practices and um, having heard from Raquel on, on more of the how-to and the tools? Um, again, this information for us is very, very important. Um, and we, we know that Diana and Stella provided really great information on, on policies and practices. So we just are really grateful for your um, indulgence on this. And um, we will just hang on for a couple more seconds. And thank you. We'll share that information for benefit of everyone. Um, we really uh, appreciate it. And one, one more, if you will just allow us this indulgence, um, um, because we really are creating more tools and more guidance and um, you know more case studies. So we're interested to know what what you're wanting to know more about, but then also one thing that we would like to remind is that we're always interested in hearing more from you um, and so if you have some good case studies or some good policies that you're interested that you that you've noted and want to share with us you can always do that at we.empower at unwomen.org um, because these you know we we're we're working um, both to share share knowledge and share practices amongst the the global community and and um so thank you very much we're gonna go ahead and um just share that for your information while i hand over to moral to to wrap up um thank you very much carla so we can see this half of our audience would like to share the case studies from other companies and we are very glad to hear that and please uh, contact with us you can contact uh, to our email we.empower at unwoman.org and please uh, introduce us to your leads with who we can work to develop or to receive these case studies. So on behalf of the Empower program, Carla and I, we want to thank you to all the participants and panelists for joining the webinar and we are very grateful to all our speakers and for their insights and um, please note that and uh, this, is, this webinar is part of a series of webinars and uh, we are having several webinars per month. So please stay in touch and thank you and we look forward to reconvening for the next webinar. And a big thank you to Diana Russo who has been managing uh, our webinar series. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, colleagues. Bye, everybody.